and welcome to my channel. For all you first time viewers, if you want to continue to be inspired through your journey to joy in every season of your life, girlfriend, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of new content that I put out every week. And for all of my returning subscribers, welcome back. So let's go ahead and get into today's discussion. Ah. All right, divorce is hard. Breakups are hard. But with children involved, it's even harder. Oh, and let me not forget the fact that now you have to learn how to, you have to co-parent with this ex of yours. You are now dealing with the fact that you, you're going to be a single mother. You're also... And most of us hate the fact that we're even thinking about this, but you also may have to throw in the mix a step parent, okay? You know, all of these things can make your head hurt. It can make your stomach ache. It could, it could leave you just wanting to lay in the bed and just totally forget about the world. But I want to talk to you today in regards to four hard lessons that I learned so that you don't stay in the bed, so you get out, you get your life, girl. On to lesson number one. The hardest lesson that I learned was to mind my business. Yeah, to mind my business. So in order to have a healthy co-parenting relationship with your ex, there are going to be times that are gonna be very difficult you know, you got to deal with a lot of feelings. You're going to feel like the world is stacked up against you, that you can't get a break. Every time you want to do something, you know, you can't do it. But then you look at him and you're like, uh, wait a minute. He's not being affected by anything that occurred in our marriage whether that's financially because he's still buying a new cars new clothes new shoes he's got this new, great new place he's going on vacations he's going out on dates and you're living with your parents or you're living with um you know a relative or you could be living with friends or you're just living in a one bedroom apartment trying to make it work and you feel like you're struggling on top of struggling you know what and you look at him and you get pissed you get pissed off because you're like, what was so wrong with me that you didn't want to be married to me? And now I got to go through all this. I didn't sign up for this. Looking at things and seeing things might get jealous of what you're seeing. But if you mind your business, don't look at what he's doing. Don't try to keep up with what he's doing. You don't know if how surface level that is. You don't know if he got a co-signer to get the car. You don't know if the new girlfriend is helping him pay his bills. You don't know if that's her apartment. You don't know. So don't speculate, don't assume. It is the less you mind his business and pay attention to what he's doing and the more focused on you, you will start healing from hurts. You will stop being angry. You'll stop being jealous. And guess what happens? You will see, you know what? You're able to form new relationships, healthy relationships with other people and other things. Meaning you will start forming better relationships maybe with family members, with some friends of yours, developing new friends, going out, enjoying some things that you like to do, getting your health back, getting going back to school, Whatever it is, whatever that next that you're supposed to do, you'll start being a lot healthier and getting it done. So that was number one lesson. And so number two, the second hardest lesson that I had to learn, as happy as I was, so I divorced the man. But not only did I divorce the man, I divorced the whole concept of that family, okay? That family life. That meant the two of us, together dealing with whatever we needed to with our daughter when i divorced him i now have to share her i now have to share you know it's two different homes so his decision making while she's with him is different than mine so i have to share that I now have to share you know what what he cooks and feeds her at his house 
may not be what I cook and feed her at my house. So you're sharing that. Holidays, okay? This is a huge one. Holidays, you have to share it. And what I found by once I started minding my, my own business, communicating with my daughter's father, it allowed for us to really start forming the co-parenting relationship that we needed to in order to raise our daughter in the healthiest environment possible with having to deal with two different homes. Number three, this one was tough and it's a tough pill to swallow, ladies. Eventually, your children may end up having another mother figure in their life. And it's, it isn't that they're going to call her mommy. It's just that now their father has a partner in their life a wife, you know, fiance, whomever, that is willing to help him out because she loves him. And come on, ladies, if you have a man in your life that loves you, you're going to want him to be there too. So don't make rules up just because you don't have someone in your life and you have to abide by that same rules later. It doesn't change because of time and year. Eventually, you know, you're going to have that other parental figure around your child. And having respect for that person is going to be critical in the relationship. Because mind you, if they are helping him, they're helping you too. And I found... Not that I gave any power, but I allowed them to deal with things in their relationship and I dealt with things in my home. He was working and she, if, she, if he got pulled to work, uh, you know, overtime or a double and the only way she could be picked up that night so that he could take her to school the next day was to have his, you know, girlfriend pick her up when she got off of work. Guess what? That's what we did. I respected her. She respected me. Number four is another lesson that I learned. And this one I learned from my mama. <laughs> and not that she went through a divorce. And a lot of times we find ourselves in a circle uh, of others that may not have been through what you're going through. But listen to them. Listen to what they have to say. Because my mother said this to me. Just because he wasn't a good husband for you doesn't mean that he's not a good father. That was critical, critical, because I could have just as well been so angry that he didn't want me. Now, how can you not want me? You know, um, that I could have made things so hard, so hard that actually it affected, it would affect me. I wouldn't have been able to travel on my job. I would not have been able to, um, you know, have time to myself. I wouldn't have been able to, you know, date um, and enjoy my life with my friends and just do grown up things that I wanted to do because I would have hindered myself by being so angry and not allowing him to be a good father. Um, so the four hardest things that I learned. So number one, make sure you mind your own business. Number two, communicate with him. Number three, be respectful of that other person. As long as they're treating your ch ch child right or your children right, respect them. And number four, allow him to be a good father to you know, his child or his children. All right, so I said a lot. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please comment below and let me know um, and the community know one of the hardest lessons that you learned from maybe a breakup or a divorce and maybe how you got through it. Um, we would love to hear from you. And Remember, if you are a new viewer, to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can receive new content every week. And don't forget to tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend.